Hello everyone and welcome to this EcoVision Deconstructed video. Today we're gonna talk about the watershed segmentation algorithm. First of all, a bit of theory and then I'm gonna show you some use cases, um, how to use the watershed segmentation and how to use the different settings. But first of all, a bit of theory. So what the watershed segmentation does, it creates image objects based on a single layer. So it's based on gray values and it's a bottom-up approach. So it starts from single seeds and grows until it touches other objects and then it stops growing into those directions. Okay, so these seeds are local intensity minima. You also can invert your layer and then your maxima become the new minima. I'm gonna show you how to do that in the algorithm. And then it simply does a virtual flooding of your grayscale image and the objects grow until they touch other objects and then they stop. And what you get in the end is uh, separated pools, right? As you see here on the right, so it fills up from the bottom from, from your minima, fills it up and in the example on the right hand side, you finally get three objects. So it starts at the bottom of the valleys, if you think about uh, an elevation model, and it fills it up slowly and when it touches, another object, then it keeps this border until there's no filling to do anymore. How does it look? It looks, uh, or it can look like this. So again, it's based on a pixel layer. So this one doesn't work with image objects values. It works on pixel values. And you see the black areas are in this case minima, so low values, and if you run, for example, a watershed segmentation, the result could look something like this. Important is uh, to understand that this algorithm doesn't create homogeneous image objects. Right? It starts at local minima and then it grows until it touches other objects. You have different settings to somehow influence the growing. Um, but again, it doesn't create homogeneous objects, just uh, for example, like the uh, multi-resolution segmentation. You also, as I mentioned before, can invert the layer and then it starts in this case from the bright objects and grows into the neighboring from those maxima, more or less. Again, with the default behavior um, that you can change, each initial seed will correspond to an object of the final segmentation result. But you also can define certain criteria under which two initial distinct seeds will be merged. And we're gonna have a look at those on the next slide. So we have four different criteria that you can use uh, to define when these objects should be merged. And you actually can combine three. So you can have three conditions at the same time in one algorithm. Let's have a look at the first one. So the first one is called overflow area in pixels. This one is uh, pretty straightforward. So objects are merged based on the area. If they're touching a neighboring object and they are smaller than 10 pixels, they're gonna be dissolved into the neighboring object. Um, which leads to less image objects um, resulting out of this watershed segmentation algorithm. Then you have another one called overflow height. This is also uh, pretty straightforward. So seeds whose maximum intensity is below the criterion will be merged into neighboring objects. The intensity maximum is the maximum pixel value of the layer you have defined. And again, it works only on one layer, right? One grayscale layer. The next two ones are a bit more complex. Uh, overflow depth, this one looks at the range, so the minimum and maximum. So the difference between the minimum and maximum pixel value of that raster that you're running this segmentation on. And if it is lower than your defined range, intensity range, it will be merged into a neighboring object as soon as it touches another object. Last but not least is the overflow volume. And here you can think about uh, the amount of water in a valley. So it looks at the difference to the current intensity maximum for each pixel. 
and it sums all the values up of each pixel to the maximum intensity value. And this is the so-called volume. So it's more or less the volume of water in a valley. And if this volume is below the criterion, seeds will be merged into neighboring objects. So you can play around with those. I'm gonna show you a bit uh, how you can use it. And again, you can combine three of those in one algorithm. Okay, let's have a look at a few examples. I'm gonna show you three, more or less. Uh, let's jump into eCognition and have a bit of fun. Okay, so this is the first project and um, yeah, this is called watershed segmentation. I'm just gonna briefly show you a few different watershed segmentations with dif different settings. So what I do in this project, I do have RGB and the infrared, a DTM, DSM. So first thing I do is calculate a normalized digital surface model which you can see here and I'm going to do the watershed segmentation on this NDSM. So let's check the first algorithm here. So it's called watershed segmentation. It is in the first section in the segmentation section. So watershed segmentation and you just have a few settings here. Level, the, the output level name, you define this one here then the layer that you want to do the watershed segmentation on in my case it's going to be the ndsm then you have the setting here that i mentioned previously invert layer yes no if you set it to no it starts at dark pixels if you invert it it starts at the bright pixels as a seed then you do have neighborhood options haven't mentioned that yet but what it basically does if you use four connected, it only looks at the four pixels that have border with the seed pixel. Um, if you have eight, it's also gonna add the diagonal pixels. So you have two, four, yeah, you have uh, eight neighboring pixels. That makes sense to the seed pixel. So overall nine. And then connected, disconnected. Um, is simply if you want to create connected objects as a result or disconnected image objects but simply disregard disconnected disconnected if that doesn't ring a bell um, choose connected um, and you're on the safe side more or less okay so i don't change anything else domain pixel level output uh, level name layer that i want to run the segmentation on don't invert the layer Eight connected and I don't change the seed based fusion which I explained pre previously so let's simply run it default settings and that's the result and as you can see right it starts at dark pixels as seeds and grows from there looks already interesting and again you're not getting homogeneous image objects and they are highly heterogeneous um, let's change a bit of the settings. Now, in this case, a, I prefer this result because I actually want to try to get a single object for each tree that I see. And now it starts at the bright pixels because I inverted it and actually already creates nice outlines in some areas for the trees. Let's look at this so in the optical image it's difficult to discriminate trees um, but the elevation data reveals the trees and the watershed segmentation in this case really nicely can help you to delineate single trees and we, we're gonna try to improve that in a second so use inverted NDSM but change neighborhood parameters so let's go for four connected and so on it doesn't change a lot right it's just the neighborhood now I'm using eight connected. Um, you see the objects are slightly changing. You need to know what you prefer, what you want to do. Um, in this case, I changed it to uh, eight disconnected. I'm going to skip this one. It is the same result as before, but the objects, the resulting objects are disconnected, which means they are cheap objects. They are not allowing to use neighborhood properties, for example, but they are processing faster. But disregard connected and disconnected. Let's jump into the next one. 
Again, I am looking for trees. Let's try to improve the segmentation somehow so we get nice delineations of trees. What I do is, blah, same settings here, watershed segmentation, pixel level, blah, blah, blah. I use eight connected, I invert the layers, right? So it starts at the top of the trees at a very bright pixels and then it grows from there until it touches other objects. Um, and what I set here in the seed-based fusion, I added one seed criterion. Again, you can add three. And I, I am using overflow area in pixels, threshold 20. So if an object touches another one and it's smaller than 20 pixels, it's gonna be merged into the neighboring one. Let's run this one and we should get rid of very small objects. Yes, so that looks actually promising. Um, and actually, I really like how it already looks here. Um, I have the feeling that it nicely delineates here already different tree tops and canopies. And what I do in the next section is simply I'm trying to get rid of these image objects here in uh, these ground image objects um, that have a low elevation. So I'm shrinking my objects here that are lower than three feet probably in this image. Um, then let's check the classification. So that's my ground that is not a tree. And you see it actually, it looks pretty good. Um, then I kick out a few objects. Ah yeah, these were buildings. So I don't want to have buildings in my trees. And I also remove very small image objects and I merge, whoop, merge the removed. And um, this could be already good, uh, a good result if you're looking for single trees. And now you can actually count the trees. I think I'm gonna fast forward. So I do have 2,806 trees here based on my watershed segmentation. Then, yeah, you could convert it to a vector, for example, putting a center point into each object and that would be a nice result. If you're interested in a more advanced or more sophisticated rule set, uh, you also can check our knowledge base online. Uh, Christian Weise did a very nice, uh, or has uploaded a very nice rule set uh, regarding delineation of trees. He also uses the watershed segmentation, but then he creates a three, 3D points. And um, so he, he does it based on a point cloud. So if you're interested in that, check our knowledge base, search it in the search window tree delineation and you're gonna stumble across this rule set created by Christian. Uh, very good one. So first example here. Oh, it's gonna be a long video. Let's open the next one. So that's the next one. Pretty simple. I want to keep it simple um, just to show you how watershed segmentation works or where it comes from. This is a digital terrain model. And if I run a watershed segmentation with certain settings, I actually can get the watershed. Um, let's convert it to a vector. Let's create a line. Um, so the white line would be my watershed. You can check the settings in the rule set, which is also provided in the knowledge base. You can download the data and the rule set to check the settings. So that would be also, I used the watershed segmentation to create a watershed. Last example, because I didn't wanna just show you examples based on elevation data. Um, I couldn't come up with <laughs> different examples, uh, but I got one more without elevation data. Let's have a look at this one. Okay, and this one is also, uh, it's the same image as the first example, so it's just a subset of this uh, NDSM that I showed you with uh, the trees, where we try to delineate trees. Now, um, let's have a look. I'm just gonna run the initial segmentation, and we also, in this case, create a point cloud. So we also have something in 3D, always nice to look at it. So again, the input here is only NDSM, 
but you can create a point cloud based on the NDSM. Let's have a look at the point cloud, increase the size of the points. So what I did, I, I created a point cloud based on the raster image, the NDSM elevation value. Um, the segments represent more or less high trees, higher than 16 feet. Um, and now what you see is that these image objects do have more than one tree. But uh, let's assume that the watershed segmentation didn't pick, uh, didn't pick this up. Um, so what you could do actually is calculate a distance map within these objects. Let's go from that. So it calculates the distance in this case uh, from the border of the objects to the center. So you get high values in the center because it has uh, the, the distance to the border is uh, larger here than at the border itself. And now what you could do is run a watershed segmentation on the distance map and that will split your object into sub objects. And the goal is to get better single tree delineations, right? Um, and it also split this one. Let's put on the point cloud here again. And I mean that the result with the new objects actually looks better than the previous ones, right? So that would be a single tree, this one, this one, this one. So if the watershed doesn't do a very good job or if you get stuck in the parameter setting in the watershed segmentation of the trees, you, afterwards, if you want to split the trees, you could run uh, or calculate distance map within the trees and run another water seg uh, watershed segmentation on the distance map. Just give it a try and see if that works out. Uh, what am I doing here? I'm converting it to 3D vectors. Ah, yeah. I want to have a look at it in 3D. So let's do it. Um, again, there's another rule set in the knowledge base where it where Christian actually has a, a more sophisticated rule set looking at this but uh, I think you get the idea right and in this case I also I created the point cloud based on a raster image um, added 3d information to the polygon so they have a certain height uh, so it's the medium height of the trees actually and that is the result cool so that would be the end of it. Um, please discuss it also in the knowledge base, the video. You can discuss it, ask questions, download the data and play around with it. Uh, go ahead and use the watershed segmentation. It's, it's fun and it really can help you creating very nice image objects. Thank you for watching. This video became a bit longer than I wanted to, but that's how it is. Have a good day and here next time.